now I go to, to John Sohn, who in my opinion was a superior architect to John Nash. And uh, uh, unfortunately, he deserves more, more study from my part and, and, and from anyone who might be interested in his work. He was also neoclassical, but uh, I, I think in a more convincing way. I think he felt uh, that so-called neoclassicism in a, in a deeper way than, than John Nash. He was born uh, one year later than John Nash and he died around the same time. So they both lived uh, you know, to be around 80. Uh, so sir, he was made a sir, he ignited was an English architect who specialized, I don't like these words, in the neoclassical style. The son of a bricklayer, he rose to the top of his profession, becoming professor of architecture at the Royal Academy and an official architect to the Office of Works. He received a knighthood in 1831. So six years before he died, he was uh, made uh, knight of the, of the British Empire, uh, Sir John Sohn. A great honor, and I have a, whole, a lot of respect for someone who is the son of a bricklayer and, and arrives at, at, at such altitudes in the society of his time. Bravo to him. And I think he deserved it, and we'll see his works. His best known work was the Bank of England. His work there is largely, large, largely, largely destroyed, a building which had a widespread effect on commercial architecture. Uh, he also designed uh, Dulwich uh, Picture Gallery, which with its top lit gallery was a major influence on the planning of subsequent art galleries and museums. His main legacy is the eponymous museum in Lincoln's Infields in his former home and office designed to display the artworks and architectural artifacts that he collected during his last lifetime. And you'll see he was, he was an unbelievable collector. I mean, this museum this, the, uh, is, 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 is quite something. <laughs> I mean, I made me think of uh, Citizen Kane, uh, but it's very, very impressive. You will, 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 will see it soon. The museum is described in the Oxford Dictionary of Architecture as one of the most complex, intricate, and ingenious series of interiors ever conceived. Okay, he does look like a sensitive man. I, I like him, you know, I wish more architects looked like him with a feminine side, you know, with a sense of vulnerability and limitation. And uh, I don't know, <laughs> his eyes are, are, are the eyes of, of a man uh, who, whom I would like to have a talk to with. Uh, well, he became also a statue. Uh, that's because uh, the, the, the son of a bricklayer, uh, uh, you know, craftsman uh, was uh, arrived very, very high uh, on the social uh, uh, ladder. Here is another picture of him. Um, but you see there is a certain melancholia on him, on his face somehow, a sensitivity that is not very typical of, of architects. He looks uh, almost uh, like Chopin a little bit, like a piano player, not like an architect. Architects are more uh, assertive and less, less melancholy. Interesting man, I think. And I think an excellent architect. And we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, I think he will convince us even with my uh, uh, you know, insufficient um, uh, presentation. Now, these are drawings from that, um, his own house that became that uh, celebrated museum, the John Soane's Museum. Uh, and that's how it is. What you see is what you get. It is covered, it is filled with artifacts. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, he loved beauty. And, and, and yes, uh, people who love beauty sometimes, or maybe more than sometimes, they indulge in uh, buying useless things, if we can call art a useless thing. Dürer did it, Rembrandt did it until he ruined himself. Uh, you know, uh, John Sohn did it. Uh, what can you do? The artist loves beauty. And in the name of beauty, if he has a little bit of money, he, he buys things. Uh, Balzac, Balzac was borrowing money 
like crazy in order to go to the flea market and, and, and buy the most useless things. Um, you know, like Frank Lloyd Wright used to say, you know, if I, if I can have the luxuries to hell or who would need the necessities. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the, the responsible uh, creator or artist uh, does this. Balzac then ran uh, for his life for years to escape uh, his creditors because he needed money to buy useless things, but beautiful things. Uh, this is this is a section through his house. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and, and that's exactly how it was and it is. Uh, another, I imagine he did this rendering or someone working with him. Uh, these are just a few graphic works relating to his architecture. Letton Hall, 1783. So he started, it seems, earlier to build than... Um, uh, John Nash. Uh, in my opinion, the neoclassicism of John Soane is more sober uh, uh, than uh, it, it has a, even a sense of tectonics that I appreciate uh, a little more than uh, all those whitish, uh, uh, polished uh, buildings by um, by John Nash. Here, at least, uh, you, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't like too much uh, makeup, you know, even women. I, I like women without makeup. And I like buildings without makeup. So this is a building without makeup. I like it like this. It is uh, robustly sincere, if I can say so. Maybe at the time when it was built, it did have some, some kind of makeup, maybe or it's very probable, but uh, I like it as it is now. Uh, and uh, so they were contemporaries, born one year uh, apart from each other, and yet so very different, although they both seem to be associated with neoclassicism. But John Sohn uh, is, is very different from John Nash. Uh, and uh, here is a... Um, you know, the plan and the, the, the elevation, the main elevation of Letton Hall. And then we'll see uh, another uh, building by him, this one. Uh, so at the bottom is uh, Letton Hall and uh, at the top, uh, Tendring Hall, which I think was destroyed, if I remember correctly. Very similar if you look at the elevations and maybe even the plans. You know, it's it's uh, even in terms of volume of masses and the functions, uh, they are similar. These two buildings, Tendring Hall, remaining porch after demolition. So indeed, it was uh, demolished in 1955. A building from 1784. Sad, very sad. But again, here we see an architecture that became a ruin, but uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a landscape, in a situation that uh, it's almost rural. And I, I kind of like this. The, I, I like ruins, I confess. Uh, a hall, a Reiston Hall, uh, remodeled in 1786. Again, the buildings are very different from John Nash, although they are both considered neoclassical. But I don't see those uh, bothering, uh, uh, you know, white columns that uh, John Nash used in his architecture in London. Here is a different kind of uh, architecture. And well, yes, this uh, picture is perhaps uh, uh, unintentionally romantic because it is as it is, as you can see. Uh, but even in this picture, it is uh, it is a building that that. Uh, somehow negotiates between the rural and the urban. And again, like previously, I like the fact that he doesn't uh, have a makeup. Uh, so it's not, maybe his uh, modest upbringing, the fact that he was the son of a, a modest uh, craftsman, uh, you know, uh, is shown in his architecture. And I, I like this. He was not trying to mimic what he was not. And uh, although he arrived at a very high level in architecture and in the Londonese in the society. But somehow, what we saw until now, his buildings have a certain modesty, which I like, even if when the buildings are not the smallest. Uh, and they are not. But I like this uh, 
uh, this uh, reticence that, that most of his buildings seem to have. And with this reticence, we are kind of closer to what might uh, uh, be what we call modernity. I mean, they are not, still 19th century. And yes, some of these buildings apparently are, were not kept in a very good shape. Uh, but uh, even this says something uh, in a way. No, no, I, personally, I like more uh, John Soane than, uh, than uh, John Nash. Although he was capable of extravagance as well and will see his own house. Maybe that was the truth himself, the great collector. Now, this is a great ruin. It's it's uh, it, it is what this is what it is. It is a great ruin. I mean a, a house, but uh, but uh, even in this stage of, of being a ruin, it it, it is. Uh, I don't know. I think it is impressive. Maybe not so much inside. That's how it looked like uh, in uh, I don't know at what time. <laughs> not any longer. Uh, now it looks like this. Okay, uh, a yellow drawing room from 1791. So while John Nash didn't build too much until uh, 17, uh, uh, until 1800, uh, he built. All these buildings were built until 1880, uh, until 1800. Uh, this is, uh, of course, it's not for his own house. It's 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 a major accomplishment in a way. It's it's a secular uh, room, but uh, it could have been uh, less secular, so to speak. It's, it's a fine room. And it shows that uh, John uh, Soane had uh, a, good, uh, a, good, uh, a good understanding of uh, what an interior means. And, uh, and uh, there is intimacy, but there is also um, uh, you know, sense of uh, uh, grandness, of grandeur. Um, it's fine. I think it's a fine, uh, it's a fine interior. The plunge pool, uh, 1791. This is an interesting thing. I don't know what is it. It's, 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 it's some kind of a bath. Uh, but look at it. It's, it's, uh, it's both simple and complex. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, majestic in a way, but still modest. I think it's a it's a it's a striking example of the abilities of John Soane to do with a with a, an architectural language that is not excessively elaborate, a lot. Uh, yeah, a very interesting work, and essentially it's just a room, but uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. I mean, who would place two stairs, you know, symmetrically to curve themselves towards, um, you know, what essentially is a bathtub? <laughs> Obviously, this was not, not done for, uh, you know, his own father or for a proletarian, but uh, it doesn't matter. I, I like its modernity and it's, uh, it is an unconventional uh, space, home farm. This is, uh, he built several uh, buildings for this farm. Uh, I, I always like the meeting between the, the rural and the urban. Here there is more the rural than the urban. But look at this charpent, uh, this, uh, this uh, I would say, very, very nice wooden work. It's, it's um, you know, uh, it's a farm. But uh, just imagine a sculptor or a, a painter having the studio there. It, it, I, I don't know. It's a, I would love to have such a space at my disposal and to, to uh, imagine all kinds of architectures there. It's very nice. And it shows his integrity as an architect, that the structure has integrity. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, striking, I think, because of its sincerity. If you'll have a little bit of uh, time, I'll also show Philibert de Lorme to dilute a little bit the guild that I didn't prepare as uh, 
as, as well as probably it would have been necessary for John Nash and John Sohn. Uh, I would have watched uh, I hear a voice. Do you want to say something? Or please be kind and turn off the microphone. Uh, thank you. All right, another gate. There are several gates that John Nash built and several gates that uh, John Sohn uh, built. We don't build gates any longer for our cities or our uh, villages, but maybe it's a function that uh, would do some well to some... Uh, uh, please be kind and turn off the microphone. Thank you. Um, you see, his architectural language is very, uh, you know, primal. Please be kind and turn off the microphone. It ruins my my uh, my recording. Ah, sorry, I have to do this. Okay, uh, so we continue. Um, uh, please understand this, this, when I need to interrupt the presentation in order to mute a microphone, is a, is a difficult moment for me because I, 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 I don't read, I, I have to be intense and inspired and, and these interruptions uh, um, make me uneasy. I, I forgot now where, what this model is for, of maybe for this building, yes. Um, interesting, the, the, you know, the, the wild animals, uh, you know, uh, enjoying themselves in front of the villa, uh, the model uh, with, a, with the three floors distinctly uh, shown. Uh, it's a palace, it's, a, you know, it's like the French have, uh, what can we do? The British Empire, uh, the, the 19th century. There was opulence, there was power, there, there, there was uh, affluence. The Bank of England now, this is considered, as we read, his most important architectural work. And uh, from 1794, but it was uh, ruined, it, 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 it was destroyed in good measure, but we'll still see some uh, renderings and then uh, we'll, we'll get an idea about the, 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 um, the, the, the amplitude he arrived at uh, in, in, in this work, it's a, it's, it's a bank. Now, I don't know, well, there were banks in, uh, in Renaissance Florence, uh, but I don't know, I, I'm not an expert and I also don't like banks, but I like good architecture. And I think this was good architecture. Too bad, I would say it was for a bank. What can we do? Louis Sullivan also built great uh, banks, uh, his uh, jewels, the, um, several small banks that, that are glorious as architecture. In this case, it's not a small architecture. It's not this, uh, this was not a small building. This was the Bank of England. And look at it. It's almost like uh, the palace uh, of a Roman emperor is. Uh, I don't know if he built the whole thing, but it's a city within a city or it was a city within a, a city. Look at this. All of this was the Bank of England. Now we are talking about a very powerful bank, obviously. Um, and uh, I don't know why it does not exist any longer, except through, I don't know if some fragments do exist. This is a photograph, of course, uh, but it might be that even this does not exist. I don't know. Um, well, I hope this, this continues to exist. Uh, this doesn't exist, but uh, maybe, you know, it was, if it was demolished, it was demolished in the 20th century uh, or, or, or very late in the 19th century. Too bad because it was a complex, uh, intricate, uh, uh, rich uh, architecture. Somehow I like it in, more in photographs than in, in, in the renderings. And the simplified, if I can say so, neoclassicism. In fact, I, I would, I would, I would say that it is more almost like a modernistic building. Uh, also, from the Bank of England, uh, from 1797, 1800, we saw already some uh, images relating to this uh, court. 
I don't know what happened to this building. It probably doesn't exist any longer. This was from 1803. That's how it looked like, but this is, uh, I don't know if he did. Uh, yeah, I see the, his name, John Soane. Probably he did a delinea, delinea, uh, he did the drawing and then someone uh, carved etched the, the steel plate. Uh, Lothbury, Lothbury Court. The barn. Uh, the barn uh, is a very interesting building. It's almost, you almost feel it's Chinese in a way. It's primal, it's archaic. It has, uh, I wouldn't call it neoclassical because it's, it's almost, uh, almost, it's not barbaric. It also has something Asian about it, oriental. And look at these columns. I, I like his columns much more than the, the columns of uh, John Nash. These are powerful brick columns that are, um, again, somewhere in between the rural and the urban. And I, I like the uh, uh, archaic uh, quality. It's a simplicity that uh, somehow is, uh, is, is dear to me. Um, so again, very different from John Nash. Now, if it is a barn, uh, not too many barns have such columns in the front elevation, but uh, it could have easily become some kind of a you know, temple almost. A uh, park remodeled in 70, but it's also a building when they title it uh, with the word park. It's not just a park, it's a building with a park or gardens or whatever around it. Now we arrive uh, here at this building. You see this building, you say, so what? It's a villa, it's a, you know, a mansion. But inside there is the, a great collection, very much in the spirit of his own museum, the Jones Sons Museum. And, and <laughs> you know, it's, it's unbelievable what is going. I mean, look at that huge uh, clock, uh, which is supposed to be a watch actually, a, a pocket watch, but oversized you know, uh, uh, suspended from the neck of, I don't know, Hercules or who, who is this uh, mythological man, uh, quite impressive uh, with his muscles, if not with something else. And it's just incredible. I mean, you have here Remulus and Remus, uh, you know, and, 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 and the, and the uh, how do you call it, uh, loop, uh, the wolf, uh, the she-wolf, and uh, that's how it was his own uh, house as well. Uh, just an incredible collection of, uh, of uh, sculptures and base reliefs and uh, stuffed animals. Uh, <laughs> it's surreal. And some of these uh, went for sale. Uh, and look what's, what's going on here. You have the chandelier and then you have the zebra and the... Uh, God, it's surreal. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> I guess it's a museum now. Contents of this uh, building, a no who, a no who, I don't know how to read, park available at auction. Look at this. You know, it's an Imago Mundi in a way, uh, in miniature, but still impressive. Okay, gateway at uh, Pitsanger Man Manor, 1803. Uh, another gate, many gates, and we don't have gates any longer because in a way we don't have places. It's where we have this uh, endless uh, urbanism uh, that we, we, we don't have limits. In order to have gates, you need limits and uh, limits, you know, for an estate or a limit for a city or a town or we don't have. Is this uh, sprawling, unending, you know, and I think, I think some limits are necessary just as at the level of transparency and opacity, we also need, I think, uh, some kind of uh, negotiation between the two. As Jean Nouvel said, uh, total uh, transparency is obscene. Equally, I would say in urbanism, uh, total, uh, uh, you know, uh, extension of space without any kind of uh, limits is uh, maybe even in this case, the word obscene would be appropriate, maybe with some poetical license. But now we arrive at his Sir John Soane Museum. 
from the outside, you wouldn't expect too much. Uh, there are two sculptures there, but that's that's about it. And the building, yes, is kept well between those two buildings on the sides, which are less well kept. But inside is a different story. Look what is inside. You know, it's, I mean, did he live like this? If he did, he is both uh, to be uh, envied and pitied. Is is. I'm thinking of Citizen K, the great film by Orson, uh, Orson Welles, considered by the North American Academy the best uh, North American movie. I suggest you see it if you can about a man who also collected uh, voraciously. And in the end, you know, when we return to the dust, we are born from what happens to the great collection. <laughs> but here the collection is so, uh, you know, well placed on the walls and on everything is incredible. Look at this. <laughs> Obviously, this man, John Soane, Sir John Soane, had the taste of totality. He wanted, he wanted the whole of life, the whole of culture, the whole of human history, everything. He was, as Nietzsche would say, pour everything into the mold. In other words, do not renounce to anything. And, and, and that's what, I mean, here we see all kinds of, uh, I mean, I, I imagine the, I mean, no, these are modern. And this is a different, this is, uh, I think, uh, some kind of a dining room with also with a library. Uh, and look at these uh, tomes, these, these, these great books here that, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> it's just too much. But uh, the man loved beauty and he, he loved, uh, uh, if Alva, Alvar Aalto was right that architecture belongs to culture and not to civilization, I would say that in the case of John Stone, um, uh, th this culture is somehow uh, almost uh, uh, unacceptably uh, present. I mean, it's too much of everything, uh, but still it's, it's a very interesting interior. Uh, of course, the, uh, the structural purists would comment, what's going on here? You know, it's an arch, but supported by nothing here. And uh, so the arch became uh, the decorative. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not structural. Uh, in this case, maybe what uh, the Brie answer to Louis Kahn uh, would, would say something else in the case of John Soane. I don't know if he designed those chairs, but they are interesting. Uh, and uh, everything is, 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 I mean, look at this. Uh, even a Roman emperor, I think, would have been envious. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's not a big building, really. It's, this space is kind of narrow. You saw the facade, the, the elevation of the building. But, uh, but what he achieved here is, uh, is unique. Maybe that's why the Oxford uh, Architecture Dictionary or Encyclopedia or whatever it is uh, uh, wrote what it wrote. Uh, I, yeah, I would love to see this museum, uh, you know, to enter it. I, I, when I visited London for a few days, I, I, I didn't, unfortunately, and now I regret. But what do we see here? An attempt to make the walls and the ceiling even, everything talk, even sing, through what? Through culture, through sculpture, through base reliefs, through, we don't see too many paintings, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's clearly the, the, the house of a collector who incorporated his collection into the very uh, substance or flesh of his building. And now we'll arrive at the last image, a Gothic lodge a small modest building in a gothic, uh, uh, you know, uh, with a gothic flavor, so to speak. And this perhaps as a preamble, as some kind of, a, you know, announcement for tomorrow, when I would like to, to present Victorian architecture, which in good measure was representing uh, the neo-gothic or the gothic revival in uh, 19th century England which is remarkable. And I would say this small building by, uh, by John Soane uh, has quality as well. It, it is, yes, in a nostalgic, tender way, 
you know, so-called Gothic, but uh, I wouldn't mind living here, you know, and uh, opening this little window and, you know, having maybe a tea or uh, something and may open a book. And, hey, I don't, maybe I get carried away by nostalgia.